like glow. <laughs> See, I need that. But I forgot a spot, so I have just like a little. It's like a Marilyn Monroe beauty mark. You're live, Michael Sean. <laughs> your final touch ups. You can let people know they know all your secrets now. <laughs> oh, so how many of the you? Blender, the blender, the beauty blender. blender. Well, if you're watching me, you'll know I didn't get a chance to use it because it's dry and it's not working. And hi, welcome to the show. Welcome to Creative Conversations. Well, you said you like the behind the scenes. There's some behind the scenes for you today. Um, I lost track of the countdown for the show. Um, welcome to Creative Conversations. This is, God, I feel like we've done dozens of these now. And the, the goal is always to do just that to keep it real, to have it live, to have a creative conversation from some of the biggest legends in the industry, and more importantly, from Naha, um, winners, nominees, and specifically, we're really hyper-focused on this year's nominees for 2020. Um, so we're so excited about that. Before I get into that too deep, um, I'd like to uh, mention to you, many of you have been asking me about ISSE and did you miss it? Is it too late? Um, what I would say is that you have another opportunity to see the 10 most popular classes. And I'm not too shy to say that our Living Proof editorial with live photo shoot class is in there as well. Um, they're available online just to go to ISSE, go to Pro Beauty dot org forward slash isse and you can register to get your code there and that will be um a lot of fun and i will see you there and yeah we did an actual photo shoot with victoria's secret models lots of fun and lots of wigs which i know our guest today is gonna love um also uh, we are introducing and i have some slides here that i want to show and of course, I show the wrong one first because that's how I roll. Um, we are introducing the Naha moment. So this opens. And so get out your pens. Think about this, folks. On April 19th, that is literally like around the corner and only lasts till the 30th. And this gives you an opportunity to take your favorite photo. It can be from a photo shoot. Really, it can be anything that you feel is Naha quality. And the only thing we ask is that it cannot be a Naha nominated work. Um, and you want to get something current, something from this year. You enter it. You make sure to hashtag it Naha moment 2021. And this will qualify. This image will qualify to win your own Naha. So how exciting is that? But we need lots of time to gear it up. We need lots of time to get it ready and to give it its own special moment for the Naha moment. So that happens April 19th through April 30th. That is your time to get them there, to get them listed. Any more information about this, learn more, probeauty.org forward slash Naha. But again, make sure you post this and make sure you hashtag Naha moment, very important. Okay, and we have more fun things to announce. Um, Beacon is opening for registrations uh, on July 7th. This is an elite program for students that provides mentorship, that gives them the opportunity to meet their hero, hair heroes, I like to say, influencers and top Naha artists. I even heard Ammon Carver is one of those motivating mentors. So make sure you check that out. That opens on July 7th. So it's like mentorship to the stars, we like to say. On August 29th in Las Vegas is Cosmo Prof. Have you got your ticket? Have you grabbed your girls or your boys and said, we are going to Cosmo Prof in Las Vegas this year? Why? You're going because Naha is there. Naha is there that weekend. And if you want to see the live show, we just had a big meeting. Yes, it is a live show, but it will be limited seat capacity. What does that mean? We're going to take out half the seats, which means if you don't order your tickets soon, you're not going to have a ticket. So make sure you get your tickets for you and your friends. Those tickets come in twos and fours for now. So make sure you go probeauty.org forward slash Naha. That's where you're going to be able to attend to get your ticket in Las Vegas and to have some fun at the biggest PBA 
Pro Beauty event of the year. And of course, you're going to see all the winners. And it's always a fun party, even if we're going to do it really safe. So make sure you check it out. Um, our next uh, guest in two weeks will be Silas Sang. You know him after entering 10 years, 10 years of entries. He has a string of wins. He is literally a rock star of Naha. Again, nominated. We can't wait to have him. I believe that's on the 21st or 23rd. They always type in when I say something wrong. And now, I would, oh, and I was supposed to go there. Ah, 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 they've got it there, April 21st. See, they're like, hello, MSC. It's right in front of your face. Um, Silas sang 4 p.m., 7 p.m. Eastern will be here with me. We're very excited about this incredible individual. If you don't know who he is, Google the name. The work will blow your mind. Okay. And also, I just got a last-minute message, but um, I will share this out on my social media. Future Leaders has officially launched. They have another event. The first one was pretty much sold out. They have another event coming up. Any details to that, if someone could put that in the chat for me, that would be amazing um, because I want to get that in as well. So lots of PBA fun things going on. None more fun than Naha, in my opinion, and nothing more fun than our creative conversations. I want to tell you a little bit about our guests. Look, we've had so many legendary artists. We have this incredible talent, Light Silas Sang, on the show. But what I consider today's guest is a, is a future legend. Um, his passion and energy is contagious. He literally had me laughing in the first 10 seconds of being there. And it's through that energy, that, that radiating of passion that I think is what we really celebrate at Naha, the quality of work and that passion. I know that this individual is going to really continue to give us great things for the rest of his life in the industry. Nominated for Student of the Year while still being in school. Please welcome to our show, Joey Posner. Hello and welcome, Joey. Hey, Hello. hey. What did I tell you about the energy, folks? Look at this kid. <laughs> How are you today? I'm doing wonderful. I'm so happy to be here. What are we seeing here? Where are you? I'm in my bedroom that I turned into my little hair studio, put my bed up on a loft because that's a second, that's an afterthought. The hair is first. <laughs> so this is my room and this is my little corner where I do all my wigs. So oh they're stacked up behind me next to me. Oh my God, yeah. this is awesome. And they're all so clean and so beautiful. I mean, it's it's almost like you were born with a golden hairbrush and iron in your hand. <laughs> How did, I mean, like I started, there are photos of me at five years old teasing my Nana's big red Texas style hair, bleaching my mom's, you know, hair. Seven years old, I had to do it every, you know, every other Tuesday night for bowling night because she didn't want those pencil dots. Yeah. I, Right. I am a product of the fabulous women in my life who mm -hmm. made that happen. How did you get started in, in being so passionate about hair? I think my interest started when I was pretty young, but I didn't really get into it till I was a little bit older, not quite five, but I was, I think I started because I went to daycare before okay. kindergarten, before preschool, and I wanted to braid all the Barbie's hair. And I would style and braid all these little Barbie's hair. My cousin taught me to braid. And that just kind of like boomed into something else. I think she gave me a Barbie, my daycare teacher, my daycare lady. Yeah. She like gave me something. And I was like, because I just kept on playing with all the dolls and doing their hair. And my aunt is a glamorous lady. She has a bunch of highlights and lowlights. She used to always come to my house with a new hairstyle and I would just stare at her. So yeah. like it's the glamorous women, it, we love them. <laughs> See, it is. So we have that in common. We yeah, both have we have the glamorous, glamorous women, women yeah. that got us into the industry. So clearly a big reason you're here today is because, you know, you are, you are nominated for student of the year work. Uh, tell us a little bit about your school, where it's located, why you went there. So um, 
I went, I'm going to Aveda Institute of Art and Science in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Oh, so Minneapolis. Nice and, nice and chilly. Um, I went here because I love energy and the city. So I did not want to be in like a strip mall somewhere out in the suburbs. I mean, there's still some good schools out there, but I just wanted to go to somewhere bigger and yeah. that, like provide me more. Um, and I really, I know that it's the first and original Aveda Institute. Yeah. So I was like, well, it's here in Minnesota. I wanted to travel to go to like a different state, but then I was like, wait, it's here with me. So it's such an old building and it's so beautiful. And I just kind of, I kind of get that vibe from it that I grow mm -hmm. from just big old building, gold trimmings. So a little bit aesthetic, a little yeah. bit of aesthetic also for me, why I chose it. But I mean, and that's, so that's the, that's the OG original, like horse yeah. started or? Wow. Yeah, it's the, it's the, well, I think he had one, he had a mansion before okay. that was the original, then he moved to that one. And that was the first, like, it's still like the same school and it's the original school. It's super old. It's huge. It's like five stories or like, wow. and it's insane. It's gorgeous too. They have like a giant ballroom. It's so cool. Really oh old. Wow. Well, yeah, kind of so haunted. But, yeah. <laughs> well, you are, you were in a, a good starting ground. Um, even many of my interviews have been somehow connected uh, to Aveda, including Antoinette Binders, who is just, such an incredible woman and steals the show every year at Amazing. the Lion Awards. She is such a talent. So, so cool. what inspired you to enter Naha? I mean, have you always been a competitive person? Where you, why enter Naha? <laughs> when you got me at the competitiveness, I've always been very competitive. So Anytime I see an opportunity to show my my passion and like what I do, I'm like, I'll jump on it. Any sort of competition that has to do with hair, makeup, costumes, I'm like, um, I'm gonna try my best. They don't always work out, but yeah. I don't really like to ponder on the failures. I'll just like move on to the next project and keep on working harder and use what I learned from the other stuff. So yeah, definitely I saw a big competition that could be very big for my career. Uh -huh. So I entered, yeah. So it's definitely the competitiveness in me and the opportunity that I just was so intrigued. I wanted to be part of something. Yeah. So I saw these big, gorgeous hairs and I was like, I want to be one of those people that is a part of this amazing hair industry. So yeah, that's a pretty good summary, I think. Yeah. I mean, it's a great story. I mean, for me, it was like, it was like uh, I was in beauty school and it was kind of like there was this competition and I was like, oh, it's cutting. I like cutting and styling. And then mine did not go so well because my model and hopefully she's not watching, but she had a bit of a, you know, a little party drug problem. And so she <laughs> got stuck in the bathroom, literally could not come out. So I'm like all ready to go. And she's like, <laughs> completely. <laughs> That was my first competition. And you get a zero because your model's laying on the bathroom floor. Good darn. Uh, it's um, <laughs> it was it was that time, you know. Um, so let's talk about I brought it up briefly. So let's talk about your collection here. I'd like to break it down. Let's let's just first talk about what is the overall inspiration behind it. I really love the idea of monochromatic pastels mm -hmm. because there's something a little bit difficult about making details pop out when there's just one color. Yeah. And that's a kind of a challenge that I think is very aesthetically pleasing to my eye is to notice all the details in something, even though they're all the same color, not shade. There's a bunch of shades, but the same color. Um, and yeah. I love the impact of all of them being their own their own like pastel shakes. It reminds me of like superheroes or something that just like, it reminds me of superheroes a lot. Yeah. Cause they're yeah. just like their signature look. They all feel like themselves, but together they're still cohesive, but just yeah. very different. I also feel like a little bit of like 
almost kawaii or like a little is is there any japan influence here or oh for sure harajuku <laughs> japan anime anime kick butt lady is kind of my inspo because okay. in, in those shows they would be gorgeous their hair would be down to their ankles it'd be bright pink but then they'd be defeating bad guys yeah and i love that <laughs> just i love that so much and so that's kind of and I love the softness of it. It comes from the the color palette and the designs kind of come from Harajuku street fashion. Yeah. It doesn't really look like what we would think is street fashion, but it is very street fashion inspired. I so love yeah, some texture in there, some grunge. But so let's, break, let's break it down. Cause you know, to do a shoot it, it often involves a lot of individuals. So um, makeup, let's talk makeup. Yeah, um, I had a good friend, uh, Brittany on the beat on Instagram. She did two of my models makeup, uh -huh. and I I did one of my models makeup because she couldn't. I did I didn't didn't do them all together because I'd be a lot of people in one space. Yeah. So I did two on one day and one on another day. Mm -hmm. uh, the makeup I wanted to kind of be blown out, so it's just like their color, but just like softly on their face. Uh huh. Um. And I wanted the purple, my purple model to have a little bit more of a sharpness to it. So her uh -huh. lipstick is blown out, but her eye makeup is a little shaped like a cat eye going upward. And who needs eyebrows? So we bleached all their eyebrows. <laughs> you even bleached yours, it looks like. I did. It was, these are my three girlies from school. I love them. Yeah. Um, they came over to my house the night before the photo shoot. And we had a little tea party and bleached eyebrows. And <laughs> they've never done it before. So I wanted to make them feel comfortable. So I'm like, I have an idea. I'll do it first. And we, <laughs> I literally was like, see? Oh my God. You led by example, which yeah. years ago, I, um, I dressed up as uh, Judy Garland for Halloween. <laughs> And it was before all these like TikToks and tutorials of how to like get rid of your eyebrows with, you know, glue sticks and all this yeah. stuff. So what I would do is cut them really short and then um, bleach them. And then I would, before I would go to bed that night, you know, I did it twice in my whole life, but before bed, you just take the brown color and put it over it. And it worked like you, your yeah. eyebrows are a little heavy, but it worked. <laughs> Yeah, really, I mean, if it works, it works. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. I'm honestly like, love, maybe I should try that. <laughs> it totally worked. I mean, it totally, totally, because if you buzz, if it's like a number two or whatever, it's really short, but it's yeah. enough hair to accept the brown dye when you put it back. So little tip Ooh. from like, you know, an 80s guy. Ooh. Um, I like so that. let's talk about doing a shoot. You're a student. Do you have any advice for other students or maybe some who don't have a ton of money? You know, it's been a pretty crazy year and everything um, for how to put together their own shoot. Yeah, I definitely, well, to start putting it together, plan it out physically on a sheet so you can visualize it, write it down so you know, especially dates and like the days you need to prepare for the shoot especially prepare like the few weeks before the photo shoot is what I did a lot of. Yeah. Um, connect with people that you already know. If you're, you're like me, new to the industry, don't have a uh, high fashion photo shoot friends. I just had a photographer who I loved her work. She did senior photos for high schoolers, but she was so sweet and yeah. find someone who listens. Cause if you're trying to do it on a budget, you're probably gonna have to find someone that that's not their expertise. But if you do do that, so find someone who listens, who can accept your vision, because you will be able to find something easier, but they need to be able to adjust to the art and the avant-garde and the high fashionness you're trying to portray. Yeah, definitely yeah. makes sense. And let's talk wardrobe. I know you said you wanted to keep more of that monochromatic palette um, tell us about the wardrobe and your thoughts here. The wardrobe went through a lot of iterations. Um, <laughs> at first, I was going to make all three models' outfits. Okay. Um, nope. 
that's too i was doing so much hair and wigs and i it was i tried to i bit off more than i could chew so i didn't didn't do the outfits and then they're all gonna have the same outfits didn't happen because i couldn't find a mint one i couldn't yeah. find a mint dress in the same style so okay. then i decided let's go kind of um minty and the right. minty very soft and the reason why i did this in the end what i got i was looking at for my inspo for the whole photo shoot, I was looking at runways and I noticed like Moschino, um, there's a few other runways that they all were wearing a lot of pastels. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think it was for the 2020, 2021 collections. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it was 2020 at the time. So right. there was a lot of pastels. So I was like, perfect. Soft, flowy pastels. I need to run with that. That's what looks like it's up and coming in the runways. I got to go for it. Right. A little, yeah. I think Moschino did like a full, Victorian era uh, French silhouette. So that's why there's uh -huh. a little bit of historicalness in the sleeves and the outfits I chose. Uh -huh. The little ribbons, the long dress. So they all kind of have a little little historical touch to them with the pastels. I love and that's it. what I ended up going with. So fun. Yeah. And a shout out to your photographer. What's her name? Yeah. Um, her name is, I can give you her Instagram. It's Kristen. Annie Engel photography. Okay. And we'll... I can type in the chat, honestly. <laughs> so I can type it in it. Court, you're so good at these things. Um, we And folks, if you have any questions for Joey, go ahead and ask them. Coming in from Facebook, Adam Lewis says hello to you, Joey, and sends hello. his love. He loves your collection. Um, ah. Lots of love coming from Facebook. Folks, ask your questions or just come on and be silly with Joey and I, because we like to have fun. I'm gonna keep going now and into this. Now, was this entered the previous year or is this just something you created for fun? Uh, this is for a scholarship competition I entered for oh, Aveda. Okay. This one is um, right before the pandemic hit, like oh, right nice. in March. Um, <laughs> the school's closed down, I had a week and then everything shut down. So I had a oh. one week before while things were still open to make, to buy my stuff to make this outfit. This was a scholarship competition that we had to make a full outfit from head to toe out of recycled wow. materials. Wow. So um, this is, and we had to do the hair, makeup and outfit. Okay. This is a paper, newspaper dress I made, completely uh, 19, 1920s burlesque kind of showgirl outfit. Mm -hmm. um, out of paper, so it was all crinkly, very fragile. And I, she, this is my one of my best friends named Kirsten. She came over and I made the dress to her body, so it only fits her. And it's just a lot of paper, cut, glued, sculpted in uh, to shape her. And that's a wig. So that's um, a very nice human hair wig I styled for her and her makeup also. And those are the glued eyebrows. Wow. You were that we were talking about earlier. Yeah, glue I tried Judy eyebrows. Garland again a couple of years later. The glue went okay. <laughs> the glue is so difficult. I'm like, why am I putting this on my face? And then I'll sit there in the mirror, like, what what did I what did I do to come to this with Elmer's yeah. kids glue on my forehead? Yeah. Well, it's uh, really, it starts to come off when you're like drinking and it's Halloween, but it's just like what? it starts to look scary, but What's you know, like you feel it, go for it. <laughs> Peel it and go for it. It's Halloween, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, oh, right. yeah. You have to go for, for Halloween for sure. <laughs> that, was, that was for me. I'm loving this. I, I mean, I think the tailoring on that dress is so great. Do you ever um, get compared to like, I, I used to do hair for uh, Project Runway, Project Runway All Stars. You ever get comparisons to Seriano or? <laughs> um, I mean, I'll take any anything, any sort of comparisons I'll take. Thank you. <laughs> well, you're on your way. You're about the same age <laughs> as when uh, he started out. So tell us what we're looking at here. I We wanted to see some other things that you're working on, some yeah. other things that inspire you. These are special to me because these are like some of the first wigs I ever did. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is me teaching myself how to curl and flat iron and do all these fun styles cut bangs the first picture is like i think the first time i successfully flat uh curling ironed a wig because okay. it's synthetic 
That's not human. So that. <laughs> that is so hard. To I like five degrees. <laughs> oh, no, I, I ramped it up. I almost melted it, but it worked. Those are, they were some ringlets. I wanted some bouncy ringlets. That second, I have a cute story with the second picture. Um, I used to go to garage sales to buy wigs and I would, they'd be trashed Halloween wigs. I would comb them out, style them, brush yeah. them, make them look pretty again. I, yeah. I had like, 50 wigs that were I was 13 12 maybe and I would just I had a room full of wigs it was not organized like this yeah. it was a mess when I was 12 yeah but that wig I went to a garage sale and they had hair extensions and hair pieces wow. so I was like I'm gonna make a wig you made so a like, front wig what so I made that's my first wig I ever made I think yeah. it was I think I was 13 and it was 11 o'clock at night yeah, I didn't stay up then. I, I stay up now, but I was like, I need to do this. So I stayed up till two in the morning on a school night making a wig. And I was so proud. My mom was like, why are you so tired the next day? And I showed her a wig I made. And she was like, what are you doing at night? You're like, and then, I'm sorry. Oh, no, I was, you keep on going. I was going to say the third wig. <laughs> no, the, talk about the third one. Yeah, the third one is the first wig I ever owned ever like the first wig I ever had I was two three it's always been in my house yeah. I added hair extensions I got from the beauty store into it to make it all long and beautiful it used to be a bob and I was like I want long hair don't know why I just didn't get a long haired wig <laughs> but I was like I need to make this wig beautiful because it was like special to me and that's yeah, what that uh, one is Oh my gosh. Hot glue <laughs> burns for days. We have it's funny you just said challenging because uh we have a question from Facebook. What was the most challenging part of this collection? Oh, honestly, I would say planning it. Um the hair itself, you would think the hair would be the hard part. Yeah. But I think it was more it was not. The hair is the easy part. Cause you yeah. have the vision, you have the skills, you have the, you know what you want to do and you just have to do it. Right. We're trying to find all my models, trying to find a photographer, a space, a time, trying yeah. to coordinate with all my models, everything. Uh -huh. My first mint model couldn't make it. Uh -huh. um, yeah. My first mint model couldn't make it. So I had to like go through three models and I ended up going back to her. So <laughs> it was, it was, it was chaotic. It was definitely a mess. Um, oh, but eventually got it together. It's just so many people that I'm trying to plan and I'm like trying to juggle school on top of trying to juggle putting a whole photo shoot together. So that's, it was a lot. That's amazing. Jen Perovich wants to ask if Joey has melted a wig before. <laughs> um, yeah, I've done it twice. I definitely remember um, both times it was because I left my flat iron on way too hot. Oops. And normally it's fine, but I like went to do something. I came back. So it was just sitting there open, getting hotter. And I put it right on a wig and then the whole section just broke off. And I was like, bye-bye. Bye-bye. He's over here somewhere. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. So, um, and uh, a relative of yours, Melinda, wants to let you know that your uncle Mark wants to be a model. Um, <laughs> model. So what are we looking at here? Ooh. Ooh, I should ask. This is a gorgeous, amazing model. She's mm -hmm. so beautiful. Uh -huh. um, she, Her name is Annie Mae. Okay. She's kind of like an alternative person of okay. mine. <laughs> because you know when you have so much creative energy, but you have, you're at home, quarantined. Yeah. Yeah. Who am I going to put those these wigs on, this makeup on, these outfits? And I'm like, why not me, you know? Oh Just like, God. you know, I needed a way to get out my creative energy. Um, and so this is what it turned into, this. In fact, that's the wig I melted, the one in the middle. <laughs> I don't, literally, I think these could be your next entry if you're still a student. Like, really, <laughs> these are so solid. I mean, and, and to me, I'm getting a lot of pop starness. Middle, I'm getting Ariana. Right yeah. side, I'm getting Grande. Left side, I'm getting like young Tanya Tucker or something. Mm -hmm. Like, 
you know, uh, great. The gold one is very, my whole inspiration was um, Donatella Versace. Right, right. Uh, Lady Gaga, uh, art pop era, just yeah. no eyebrows, bleached hair down, just black and gold. So good. Uh, I, that's very classic Vers uh, Versace, but I wanted to do it. And then the other two are just anime pop star princesses that I love. I love them. Those are really good. And and I don't know if you've thought about entering them or if they've already entered somewhere else, but they're very, very strong. Very good. Thank you. Um, I, I do these once a week. Every week I have a new look like these that I post. So I'm, they're just pushing, pushing content out there. Yeah. It's like, it could be the self-portrait collection. Of course, I, I should know. I don't even know if that breaks the rules, but, um, you're extraordinarily good at modeling and you're in perfect control of how it all goes from there. <laughs> so you, you do a lot of, sorry. Oh, I was going to say that that's when we took the pictures for my models, I yeah. posed with them and then I was like, okay, good. And then I walked away for them to take the pictures. <laughs> Cause I, I love, yeah. I feel your pain. All my live shows, everybody records and makes fun because I teach models how to walk. I don't give a crap how I look doing it. You will do it just like this or you will leave my stage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm usually in like flip flops and jeans or whatever. I'm like five, six, seven, eight. Um, yeah, all flip flops and jeans. <laughs> you have another comment from Facebook. They're saying, uh, Joe, you're truly the future of our industry. So exciting. Um, they're loving your energy. I have a couple more questions I'd like to ask. Um, and it's funny, you're so good with these wigs. I don't know if you, one of my early, like just, he worked with me side by side as we were doing shows together, Curtis Foreman. He won an Emmy this year. He does RuPaul's hair for Drag Race. Oh, uh, so yes. You of remind course. me a lot of Curtis. I'll, I'll, hi, Curtis, if you're watching. He's an incredible man, but he he's Did someone he who always loved screen? his wigs. He loved his wig, and now he's doing it for the ultimate queen. If he needs um, an assistant, I'm here. <laughs> I'm waiting. I got well, some Well, it's live, so if you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> um, so tell me this. Do you, do you think you will continue to be sort of this avant-garde artist, or do you see yourself working more behind the chair, or is this – is this photo work really ingrained in, in what you want to do with your career? I think the avant-garde photo work is just like in me. Um, um, I love people and I love doing people's hair behind the chair because that's what I do at school. Now for, uh -huh. I've been doing it for a while at school. Yeah. But I want to do more and not everyone wants to leave with like a three foot tall giant like rainbow hair so i gotta get that out somehow so that's what the avant-garde stuff and the and the photo shoot work comes in i definitely see my career shifting towards that and i want to i would love to work with like bigger names in far in the future who knows we yeah. don't know but just do these kind of things and wigs are a big very big part of the industry coming up a yeah. lot of singers and celebrities wear wigs i'm like i've been on that wig game sign me yeah. up i think i think it's great because i what i've been noticing is that more women are embracing their natural textures and when they want something other than instead of jumping into a bunch of chemicals and yeah. chemical reactions with hot tools they're like i'll just wig it today and it's that and it works. myself the rest of the time yeah. I'll be a character now. <laughs> uh, you're a different person every wig. It's true. <laughs> right. Yeah. This, yeah. These, these to me are truly inspiring. I mean, I had my, my next question for you was how have you stayed creative in the last year? But I think we're looking at it right here in these three images. <laughs> and, my wigs. and I hope you, you post them frequently on Instagram and are yeah. you, are you a TikToker yet? Are you TikToking these things? I'm TikToking them. I'm not famous on TikTok. I do have a I have a small little following there. Uh -huh. Um, so I love my little fans on TikTok. I'm not huge there, but I got I got a good amount of followers because they get to see like these videos and sometimes they're like glamour shots of me just posing. Yeah. But then sometimes I'm just like doing cartwheels in my bedroom in like a crazy wig, and I'm like, 
let's see, how can I whip this wig off my head? So we got the crazy and the gorgeous. Yeah, Just, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to follow you on TikTok. Oh, it's, oh, I mean, it's really funny. Oh, you, you love pastels. I see a lot of drama in the third image. Um, you know, it's you know, I, 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 I'm always looking to younger people. People are still, you know, vibing on the energy of everything and taking it in. What do you think the next big trend is? Any ideas on that? <sighs> I think this is really strange, but the younger generation typically my generation we like to switch from trying to trend very quickly yeah. very very quickly like a few months ago it could be one trend and that could be completely out right. the next so i think the trend is going to be um being versatile okay the trend isn't going to be anything specific i think the trend is going to be switching it up okay. i feel like that makes sense like the, you're going to have to be able to change very quickly is going to be the new trend is to be able to switch your look in a, in a month. Okay. Um, <laughs> that I honestly believe that. Cause if I said, so it, it could be gone in a week. Yeah. See, I'm just, I'm secretly advertising wigs. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> you, you do need to talk to Curtis. So what's, what's next? What's, what, what's going to happen? What, what's going to happen as soon as you graduate? And what do you see happening in the few years after that? Uh, what I do right when I graduate. So I have my little mental dilemma because I graduate probably in spring, June area. The Naha is in August. Okay. So I'm like, what do I do between those awkward months in between? I don't necessarily know if I want to hop into a salon, get locked in a chair right away, right? Yeah. So, because there's a lot of great opportunities that can come from Naha just being in that space of all these amazing, talented stylists. Um, so I'm probably going to wait for a little bit, but I don't slow down while I wait. I will be, I'll be pumping out photo shoots, wigs, just pushing my brand and like what I like to do while I wait for the yeah. changes. So your brand... Also, what is the brand? This, wig, this is a wig I'm working on right now. Uh -huh. So it's just like this prismatic hair. And this is going to be for a photo shoot once it's all styled. All of this blonde is going to be prism, uh, prism rainbow. It's going to be really fun and cute. This is a wig I did. It's not I done. It. But my brand is kind of wigs, big okay. and bold and colorful. Um, I love sculpted hair. Uh, the sculpted hairs don't last very much because... When I do those said cartwheels, they don't they don't stay, right. so they're not up here. But I think my brand would definitely be pushing out very and cool art in hair, and just be doing that while I while I wait and just yeah, in general. Do you think you'll continue to be your your own favorite muse and continue <laughs> modeling your wigs, and will that eventually transition to live events? Hopefully, it can transition. Um, my alternate persona, Annie Mae, she's gorgeous, but she can't she can't be wearing the wigs forever. I need to have some more models to do my wigs. I want I want different I want different skin tones, different heights, different facial structures to work with. I want yeah. I want to do everyone's any any every type of person, every type of skin, anything. That's what I want to do, but I can't really do that on myself. I'm just me. Yeah. I forgot so, that. You. Did you get the scholarship? For oh, the, yes. For the beautiful work. I did. You I did? did? I did get that scholarship. Yep. Oh, my God. That's amazing. How did I, how did I miss that? <laughs> <laughs> the finale. Oh, my God. Congratulations on your scholarship. That's Thank impressive. You. I mean, it was amazing. I was going to be like, they would have to be sleeping if they didn't choose that for a scholarship. <laughs> that was an incredible amount of painstaking work. Oh, I stayed up till I think five in the morning every <laughs> night for a week. I got three hours of sleep for that week. I had one week to do it. So I had to make that dress, do the hair, do the makeup. I, I made late night McDonald's runs for some extra strong coffee. <laughs> well, make sure you stay as enthusiastic as you are now because it's contagious. And I've really enjoyed this conversation with you. You may have seen, you may have heard, I like to end 
every conversation with a, a fun little question. And that question for you is, um, let's say Crayola crayons, see all your beautiful vibrant colors there and all your creative endeavors. And they say, Joey Posner, we are going to invite you to make your own Crayola crayon. You get to choose the color and name it. Describe that color and tell us the name. Um, so my color, since those little wax little things can be more than one, my idea would be to have the inside of the crayon be at like a bunch of different colors, uh -huh. pastels, of course. Okay. Have the outside be white so you don't see the inside of the crayon. Ooh. So when you use it, it just kind of like changes colors as it wears out. Um, oh. So it's like always something new, something fresh, always yeah. changing. I would do blend. I like it. Yeah, just like so, it like like ombres into different colors, but you won't, won't know what's coming next. <laughs> so that would be my that'd be the color. A little complicated, but it makes sense in my head. Right, cool. <laughs> um, and what are we gonna name, call it? I mean, it didn't really. I didn't think of a name yet because it's so. <laughs> what do you name that? <laughs> Unicorn. <laughs> Probably like mystery fun. Ooh, <laughs> so fun. stupid. Okay. Something for kids. I, unicorn. I don't know why. I just, mystery fun sounds amazing. Yeah. Mystery, mystery fun sounds unicorn. amazing. Joey, I'm going to let you have the final word here. Anything you'd like to share with your friends and fans and followers who are watching into any, uh, any final thoughts on, on Naha? Well, I'm just so overwhelmed and grateful for all my friends and family who have been so supportive and just being by my side through my whole hair journey. And thank you to my um, can I, daycare teacher from like 18 years ago. Thank you for giving me that Barbie because you started a lot. She's definitely not watching, but I want to thank her. Um, I also just like uh, follow the Instagrams. Yeah. I need to get, we got to get the name out there. And if you want a wig, I got you. <laughs> Yeah, I think I might call you next Halloween. It was a lot of work. I had to, for a friend, I had to do an Audrey Hepburn, which looked amazing, if I do say yes. so. Myself. And then Judy Garland, I just threw on a fedora with short hair, but it still worked. <laughs> you know, it's a classic look. You can't, you can't go wrong. I'll show you the photos on Instagram. I think you're going to. Yes. All right, Joey. Well, thank you so much for being our guest today. Um, I'm sure, folks, you've enjoyed uh, seeing Joey and his incredible energy and being a nominee for student of the year. I have a feeling wherever Joey goes to work that they're going to let him have a few days off to go to Las Vegas and to hopefully get his trophy. Joey, we're, we're so proud of you and we're so excited for you and we're rooting for you and all our incredible nominees for 2020 Naha. Have a wonderful day. All Thank of you, you watching, have a great time. Remember, those tickets are going to sell out. Probeauty.org forward slash Naha. Get your tickets. We have half capacity. We're going to do a live event come hell or yeah. high water, but we got to do it safe. So get your tickets now. Go to the website and check them out. Thanks again, Joey. Thank you, Bye. PBA. We'll see you in two weeks with Silas Sang. See you then.